Okay, uh, just to start off with, um, to explain some of the things that we're looking at here. The, as I've mentioned in previous videos, the, these are the raster zones um, for screen splits. So each raster zone or screen split has its own interrupt handler, a raster interrupt handler, and um, that would start off with, um, you know, this one is black, uh, represented by black, this one red, this one uh, cyan, and so on. So each of those shifts in color represents a raster interrupt zone. Um, the actual code that's executed by the raster interrupt is generally these little white bars. So at the end of each one, it resets the vectors of the raster interrupt to trigger on the next, um, you know, for the next zone. So uh, there's, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine splits, although some of them you you wouldn't see. I mean, on because this is in developer mode or, or debug view, I should say. Um, you're you're seeing the entire raster sch schema, but. In reality, you, you wouldn't see above this line, which is the upper V-blank, or below about here, which is the lower V-blank. Um, and this is the open border as well, so it starts, the, the, the border would, would start there normally, and the upper border would start round about here. So, <coughs> that's just to uh, to show you what we're, we're looking at. Yeah, these, these equi-spaced lines are where the non-maskable interrupt fires. Um, I don't really want to talk about that now. That's the subject of um, the, of a really detailed article that's planned for the future. Again, for subscribers only on the blog, and um, it's it also well. Maybe you'll maybe I'll show something of what it does in a in a moment. But first of all, uh, but I, d I don't really want to go into the technical side of the non maskable interrupts in this video. So that aside, the subject of this video is. Um, Geo-referenced, geo-referenced sprites on a bidirectionally scrolling landscape. So, what that means is, how do we get sprites to appear in the same location? For example, a helicopter that always hovers over this particular tree, um, no matter what way you approach the uh, approach it from, wh whichever side or at, w at whatever speed. So that's not a particularly challenging thing to do, really. Y you reference it into the, the map feed here, and you know you activate it if it's not activated. You activate it here or here, depending on what side. And then you give it a X and Y, or sorry, a w Y coordinate, and then everything's updated as the scroll goes along. So that's a simple thing. Um, and the same really goes for this example where you have the helicopter going up and down or anything for that matter going up and down um, that's just a simple sign pattern to give it a, a bit of inertia as it goes up and down the only issue you might run into there would be if there was any kind of plexing conflicts uh, I mean you have to bear that in mind but other than that um, the biggest technical challenge with that is again the fading it in from the sides and keeping it synchronized with the landscape as the landscape scrolls. Um, but much harder by far is where we want to make a helicopter move like this from side to side or in a circle or an ellipse or that's a really bad ellipse I'm chasing out there but anyway so let's just scroll across here yeah I went too fast there and nearly overshot it. Yeah, so here we have a uh, helicopter sprite moving backwards and forwards in relation to um, an invisible axis that's roughly aligned with the top of that tree, I think. Yeah, now that's this issue that John Rollins ran into when he was programming Mayhem. He, he had a, a lot of I think he struggled for weeks to get this resolved, to get the dinosaurs to roam backwards and forwards. Now they were roaming over, some of them were roaming over really big ranges, maybe wider even than a screen. But um, anyway, the point is this is this is a bit more difficult than a geofixed one. In fact, it's considerably more difficult or more convoluted to, to, to get the code sorted out for it. So that's what I want to talk about in... Um, 
the rest of the uh, of the video in a moment um, but just to show what some of the difficulties would be I think yeah uh, as we go as it goes off the left hand side of the screen over this edge you can you need it to, uh, to act as if it's going over here and then you know and then back and over here and back but in reality the sprite can't really go over there because once once it's its tail disappears off the I'm just going to pause this and show you the problem um, you can see a bit of color flashing in that sprite that's just to liven it up a bit yeah yeah once it goes to about there right it's at the x position zero there is no other there's no like minus x positions there it would normally it would just wrap and appear over here at the msb line so you've got to prevent that from happening you've got to sort of absorb the lateral motions that go in here so it's trickier over at this side than it is over on the right hand side because you know you can go on into an empty space here because of this msb line um you know that's x position not again here and so you can go the full the full 255 or uh, at that way <coughs> but this border will hide the fact so you don't have to absorb it the same way as you do here so that's that's one issue um, and of course it always has to be where it was when you when you go back it has to be pretty much where you left it off you can't really it's very hard to fool the human eye over this uh, over the timings of this Although on that note, I, I I did notice that in Mayhem and Monsterland, on some instances of the dinosaurs roaming backwards and forwards, there was a little bug over on this side um, where it didn't always quite work. Y you would really have to be looking for it to find it, to notice it. Um, it's a tricky one to to find, but I, I did find it a few times, and I... I just presume it was a shortcut that John Rowlands made when he was calling it, and like no one noticed. You would need to, you would need to be a coder looking for it to notice it. So anyway, uh, and over the other side, of course, there's the there's the hated MSB issue. Um, you got to get things to tally with that, and of course, you know, it needs to be. It needs to be where you left it off. It needs to always appear, and and. It has to work in relation to all the, the speeds you move at as well, right up to the full um, the full 8 pixel per frame scroll and uh, at, the, at the landscape and the foreground moves at at full speed. So, if I fly back out this way, maybe I can show, um, just past the base a little bit here. Yeah. Sorry about that, a bit of a chirp there, yeah. Yeah, you can combine it a little bit with, um, and I'll, sh I'll explain this thing flickering over here in a moment. You can, you can combine it a little bit with the, with the X, sorry, with the Y motion to get a, like a, an, an elliptical effect, or you can do a circle or whatever you, whatever you like. Um, you know, just reading off the same sign table, and it's just a, a simple thing. Um, and of course we can do something considerably more impressive um, and that's where the non-maskable interrupt comes in and I'm just going to show it to you very very briefly because I don't want to I don't want to steal the thunder too much from the next articles that I that I plan to do so just scroll over and show this if you blinked you would have missed that and it's not going to look as smooth on YouTube as it does on, on Vice because of frame rate issues but I'll, I'll show it again yeah that's also done using this technique developed for the laterally sc scrolling uh, s sorry the laterally moving uh, geo stationary or ge geo reference sprites yeah it's a bit of a mouthful and it's hard to get the Hard to get it out whenever you're uh, you've been talking um, non-stop for ten minutes without a break. Okay, so the next thing to do is to look at the the methods for making this happen. Um, so yeah, sorry, that's this. So the first things 
I thought of were was in Parallaxian I, I feed the um the foreground of blocks or tiles you could call them that are ten characters across. So four of them is combined creates a um you know covers the full width of a, of the screen. And then you can have you can read the block number that, that's being fed in and see if there's um a helicopter sprite or whatever associated with that block number and then you can activate it. So that's that, w that would be the geo mapped uh, feed principle. But the big issue is the big issue is um I have it up here somewhere. Yeah. The big issue is how do we make these how do how do we do it whenever the sprite is moving in relation? It's not just in one fixed point on the edge of the block, it's it's moving about an axis somewhere. So one way you can do it would be just to have, you know, this block is fed in and then you activate the sprite and then you start activating its motions. Um and I think I mean I could be wrong but I've a feeling that's how John Rollins did it on in, in Mayhem. And I mean it it means you could use the same code that scrolls the the sprite um if it's not moving, you could use the same b basic routines to move the sprite in relation to the imaginary fixed point at about which it's moving but um i found it uh f i found it uh hard to debug it was it was getting more and more bothersome to work with so I thought you could have uh, an imaginary axis and then move the sprite about uh, either side of that axis. So something like this, a geostationary axis, it's fixed to a point and then your lateral range can move about that. And these are all your different, um, your, your diff all your different um, conditions where the lateral, sorry, where the geostationary axis is to the left of the screen um, but the range hasn't reached the edge of the screen yet and then this is where it reaches the edge of the screen and then there's the axis over that edge of the screen and so on so there's something one two three four five uh, six seven eight there's eight different conditions there and i started to code that but then I, after about an hour or so i realized you know i'm going to be adding here and i'm going to be taking away here and this could become very convoluted too so i switched uh, tag and settled on this on the, the datum method instead and that's instead of an axis that's moved about we move a fixed geostationary datum and the lateral range moves backwards and forwards in relation to that datum so you're only ever adding something to this datum position um, so if you add nothing you're back here if you add the full range you're over here and anything in between you're in between so that w that's that's the basis of that of that method and it meant that there was no uh, subtracting from the axis either uh, it simplified everything too in terms of you know you still have all this whole uh, panoply of conditions but this time it's different in terms of the realization of it uh, encoding because it's you know it simplifies everything as I've as as tried to say because you only have three basic um, datum conditions. The datum can be here to the left of the left hand edge of the screen. It can be to the right of that edge of the screen but to the left of the most significant bit line, the MSB line. Or condition 3, it can be to the right of that line. That's all you need to do this on your home free if you can get that principle. So uh, I discussed that at length in the in the article. Um, I talk about the different conditions and you know, a testing schema. So you can, if you're a coder, you can look at that and you can dive into that and, and see if you can make head or tail out of it. Um, and I have provided um, that's the wrong thing. Sorry about that. Yeah, provided a code sample as well. Um, and this is that's based on the thing that I that I showed you with. Um, with parallaxian where we have the helicopters and, and whatnot moving backwards and forwards so uh, you, you can see that it I mean this this has been tested tested out and it works you know it's 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 sound and it's it, it's um, so it's something that you can take if, if you're a coder and you can you can um, modify it use it whatever way you like 
so uh, for example if you want to make a, a bi-directionally scrolling platformer or something like that you could use this as the basis for it I, I've designed it to be run primarily from the interrupt so you would have your own interrupt uh, calling this uh, at the appropriate moment as you scroll and um, yeah this this there's there's a fader routine that fades in based on a map and then there's the uh, for scrolling left for scrolling right and then there's the the trickiest part of, of all which is where we set the sprites x position in relation to the the, the datum line uh, and there's all sorts of tests for the the datum condition and what we do under all the different uh, results of those tests and then finally there's this thing called roaming which can be run from the interrupt or can be run out of your main loop and that's where you have a, a sign table which is this is a sign table here um, and you read off the sign table and add um, steps uh, based on the sign table to the to the x position of the sprite relative to that datum line and then you can get these lateral motion effects so yeah on that previous thing i was showing that that's that's a spreadsheet you can download as well that shows you how i did the, the sign table thing although you know if you're a competent coder you, you won't need to do that in fact if you're using something like um cbm prg studio they have a that, that program has a has a generator for this kind of curve anyway but you know just for completeness it's there so Again, the article accompanying this video is just for subscribers to my blog. Uh, so if you want to download the the source code, again, if you're not a subscriber, you have to you would have to be a subscriber. But I mean, why not? I mean, there's nothing. I don't annoy anybody with my emails or anything. So I email my subscribers so rarely it, it doesn't really, you know, it's it's by no means could it be construed as uh, a pestilence. So. Think about that anyway if you're not a subscriber. And hopefully my dr droning monotone hasn't um, hasn't sent you to sleep. And on that note, I'll stop.